My name is John Pilato. I'm the Serene Endowed Chair uh, at Clemson University and Professor of Material Science and Engineering. I've been making optical fiber for about 25 years now, and uh, we have a program at Clemson that uh, specializes in the materials that optical fibers are made from. I'm also chair this year of the Fiber Lasers 13 conference. Um, it is, uh, or it has 122 uh, papers in it. Um, it continues to be overflowed, standing room only, uh, and it ranges really from everything, including the materials that the fibers are made from, the applications of the lasers, uh, power scaling, problems that fiber laser people and companies are having today, uh, continues to grow. It's just been a very vibrant conference for 13 years now. I think fiber lasers are still in many ways um, finding their, their niche. Some things are, are pretty well established. So fiber lasers for manufacturing is one area. Fiber lasers for, for defense and security is kind of another area. But there continues to be this need for um, getting more and more power out of that fiber. And as one tries to do that, um, the interaction of the light and the material don't always go the way that you want them to go. And so a lot of the focus today is on uh, what otherwise are, are fairly weak interactions that when you begin to get more and more power going through a fiber really begin to get problematic. Um, some of the fibers being used and developed today, the, uh, the, the density of, of light coming out at the end of the fiber is, is more intense than it is at the surface of the sun. So you can begin to think about why that would be a problem and all the ways that people have to figure out how to solve those problems if they want to continue to advance you know, all these applications where the fibers are used. I was trained, or I am trained, as, as a material scientist. And I, I got somewhat serendipitously into fibers. And then from there into fibers that then lays. And we're probably one of the few groups in the world where you bring kind of the combination of all those things together. The, the, the know-how in terms of what the, how the lasers work, the ability to make very sophisticated fibers, but then the understanding of what role the material plays in the fiber, and then how you actually go about trying to make those things. Um, fundamentally, as the light is propagating down the fiber, it is interacting with the material. So all the good and bad things that happen along the way inevitably relates to the interaction of the light and the material. Um, the soapbox that I've been on for a number of years now is that um, many of the applications today for fibers and fiber-based lasers have come out of the telecoms industry. So a lot of the work that was done on the erbium amplifiers for long distance communications, as we've needed these higher powered lasers, fiber lasers, a lot of the community really went back to that technology, which is 30 years old now, 20-ish years old, 25 years old now, and have made improvements to those types of fibers. Same materials, more or less, more sophisticated designs. But again, from the materials perspective, the fibers we're using today are, for all intents and purposes, not all that different materially from the original fibers that were made for long distance communications 40 years ago. So we have present needs that are becoming increasingly more difficult to meet because my argument is we're using the same material and we're trying to engineer solutions by making the fiber itself more complicated. So our approach is essentially to kind of flip that on its head and say, nobody ever said you had to use these materials. You've used them because that's what the industry standard has been. And nobody ever thought to say that there are other things out there, because very few people look at this from the materials perspective. So what we have spent a lot of our time doing is going back to much, much, much simpler structures, fiber designs, but bringing new materials into it that give you the, perf the performance that is needed, but in a much simpler structure and a much more manufacturable approach. Like any emerging technology, as this is, you are, you're trying to displace an incumbent, right? Whether you're entering a new market, you're bringing a new material, whatever the case is, uh, fiber lasers in this context, they, are, they perform well. We always want them to perform better, but you know, they, they do very, very impressive things today. Um, and again, they're built off of a material platform that's been around forever. Everybody knows how to make it. Everybody's very, very comfortable with it. So from that perspective, it, it can be a hard sell. 
bringing something new into an established market. Uh, however, there is a realization that you know, the existing materials can only take us so far. And it's one of those debates right now that we will eventually need something else, right? And so do we continue to kind of make incremental improvements and changes each year, or are we really going to think about this differently now so that five years, 10 years from now, these new ideas are now mature and we can really you know, take things to a whole new level?